I'm Dr. Raisha Bashiruddin, educationist, researcher and writer. Today I'm going to present the second video of the series of videos based on my research on Muslim women identity in America. Today I will continue to present the overview of the project titled I am a Muslim woman in America, a narrative, with a particular focus on research questions, research aims, and the significance of the study. So continue watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the bell icon to watch the videos that I will upload in future. The following research questions guided this research. Main question. How do Muslim women in America of different generations construct and negotiate their identity? Subsidiary questions include How is the construction of identity related to their day-to-day -day practices and experiences? This question can be explored using the following questions. How does the American environment play a role in the construction of identity of Muslim women? What are the challenges that they face in being a Muslim woman? How do they overcome these challenges? How are the experiences of women from different generations similar and or different? This study has four research aims. The first research aim is to discover who these Muslim women are. Following the generational cohort suggested by PEW Center report by Bialik and Fry 2019, in which they suggest the divisions of generations, which are Generation Z, who are born between 1997 to 2012. Millennium or Y generation who are born between 1981 and 1996. X generation born between 1965 and 1980. And baby boomers born during 1946 and 1964. I will examine the profile of the fourth generation discussed here. The second research aim looks into their identity in what Hall 2011 calls everydayness of their life as it has evolved over the years. The guiding question to explore this aim is, how is the construction of identity related to their day-to-day -day practices and experiences? This will include exploration of their religious identity, such as the importance of their religious identity, how do they perceive their religious beliefs and identity, and how do they practice their religious beliefs within the Muslim community and outside in their job, educational institutions, or while with others. The third research aim focuses on how these Muslim women explore the challenges that they face and how they overcome and manage these challenges. This will be explored using two questions. How does the American environment play a role in the construction of identity of Muslim women? And what are the challenges that they face in being Muslim women? How do they overcome these challenges? The fourth research aim focuses on intergenerational analysis, which will explore how these women in different times construct their identities and how their identities are similar and or different. This will be explored by the question, 
how are the experiences of women from different generations similar or different? It is significant in many ways. First, this is a study which emerges from my own interest as a committed Muslim woman who has experiential knowledge of forging identity in the non-Islamic environment. Hence, I share with the women I interviewed a lot, both religiously and culturally, and it provides a perspective that would not have been possible to present if this was written by a non-Muslim woman. The narrative analysis show how I, as a Muslim woman, understand these sample Muslim women, construct and negotiate their identity, which would lead to promoting and making public the voices of Muslim women in the global world. This study intends to give the Muslim women from four different generations an opportunity to voice their perceptions of how they understand their identity as Muslim women in the past and in the present and how they perceive it in the future. They were offered an opportunity to talk about their challenges. How do they negotiate and contest their identity as Muslims and the sense of belonging within both the Muslim community as well as in the wider diverse community of America. Second, this study is unique because it focuses on ordinary women living an ordinary life and are from different cultural backgrounds, mainly in South Florida, America. Studies conducted over the years so far have exclusively concentrated on a specific group or groups, specific generation in a specific, specific place. For example, Ali 2011 studied the Muslim American identity of a group of Muslim women in Phoenix, Arizona, before and after 9-11. Kabir 2016, in her study, discusses the formation of identity of young Muslim women in Australia, Britain, and the United States. Suleiman, 2017, conducted in-depth interviews with the young American Muslims, both men and women, in different parts of America to understand their concept of identity. Khalil, 2018, studied the lives of Muslim women, both hijab wearing and non hijab wearing in the climate of Islamophobia. They were selected from the Midwestern State University in the US, as well as from a local Islamic society, a masjid and its Muslim community. Fabrina 2019 interviewed Muslim women from three different categories. American-born citizens, naturalized citizens, and immigrants in a halqa, a woman's only religious group. In DeKalb County, Illinois, United States. Barrel 2019 examined the relationship between the mass media and Islamophobia and the effect that the consumption of media has on identity formation of Muslim youth in Bay Area in Northern California, America. Mand Wewala, 2020, investigated the private resolutions of second generation Muslim American women. The studies mentioned here add value to the area of identity of Muslim women in America but little attention has been paid to a comparison between the identity formation of women from different generations, and none have attempted intergeneration analysis. This study is unique in the sense 
that it focuses on four generations of Muslim women's narrative of identity formation in America and aims to present an intergeneration analysis. Three, this study takes a larger sample of 15 Muslim women and presents a thematic analysis of the narratives. It envisions that large number of narratives will yield rich in-depth data and provide a more comprehensive account of identity of Muslim women in America. Mostly studies focus on small number of cases. For example, Severson 2011 studied four Muslim graduate students' personal and religious experiences at Midwestern University. Kabir 2016 explored the formation of identity of 15 young Muslim women aged between 15 to 30 years in Australia, Britain, and the United States. Suleiman 2017 conducted in-depth interviews with 30 young American Muslims, 19 girls, and 11 boys. Khalil 2018 studied the lives of nine Muslim women between the ages of 21 and 31. Nadiri and Wasahi, 2017, carried out in-depth interviews of 26 young Muslim adults living in the Midwestern United States to find about the consequences of being stigmatized for embracing Muslim identity. Fabrina, 2019, interviewed 15 Muslim women from three different categories, American-born citizen, naturalized citizens, and immigrants in a halka. Bahel, 2019, interviewed five Muslim high school youth who were attending a high school in the city of Vermont, California. Four, this study focuses on four generations as described earlier. By doing so, it examines the perceptions of Muslim women in constructing and negotiating identity in different times. It takes a contextualized approach in exploring Muslim women lives and their personal, social, ethical, and religious identities as they have lived and embodied it in the American environment. Hence, this research study aims at extending the scholarship by highlighting the diversity in life in four generations and their experiences coming from different ethnic backgrounds and the complexities of their identity formation. Most of the studies concentrate on a single generation. For example, Mishra and Shirazi 2010 engaged young American Muslim immigrant women to explore how they interpret Islam based on their individual needs and situations. Mir 2011 examined Muslim American undergraduate women's performance of immigrant, gendered, youthful Muslim and American identities. Many studies have looked at a specific age group or a generation. For example, Severson 2011 looked into the lives of female Muslim undergraduate students. Khan 2015 explored Muslim women identity in special gathering which connected the women as South Asians, as Muslims, as immigrants in the United States. Manwe Wala 2020 investigated the private resolutions of second generation Muslim American women in the US. Whereas 
my study will be looking at various age groups ranging from 18 to 80 years. 5. It is noted that the identity construction of Muslim women has been studied through various methods. For example, there are many studies that used ethnography. See, for example, Mir 2014, Manson Menginti 2014, Shams 2018. Interpretive Phenomenology Mahoon 2015, Malik 2017, Anderson 2019, or case studies, for example, Perry 2014, Hussein and Howard 2017. In my study, I have employed narrative inquiry, which is based on the premise that experience is the stories lived and told by individuals as they are deeply situated within cultural, social, institutional, familial, political, and linguistic narratives. It represents the phenomenon of the experience, but also constitutes a methodology for its study, as stated by Clandinin, Kane, and Lazard, 2018. Thank you for joining me for this video. See you next week with the next video, which would be on January 21st, 2023, inshallah. Until then, goodbye and Allah Hafiz. Mm -hmm.